Welcome back. This is section 8.1 on momentum, and in your textbook, this is section 7.1. We've already looked at Newton's first law of motion, which most of you can recite. An object in motion tends to stay in motion. An object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an external force. So, objects in motion that resist motion, they want to keep moving, is the idea of momentum. If you have a velocity, if you have some kind of a, some kind of a speed in a direction, and you have a mass, then you have something that um, is called momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity, and we're going to uh, use the Greek letter rho, which looks like kind of a P, is mass times velocity, and we're going to call that momentum. In this section, we'll see that the mass of an object and its speed are both considered in momentum. So you can have something small that has a small mass that's going very, very fast, and it has a high momentum. Or you can have something very, very big going slowly, and it has a high momentum. So would you rather be hit by a small car or a big truck? Well, Demanding on the speed, if the speed is the same, I'd rather be hit by the small car because the small car is going to do a lot less damage on my car than the big truck will. Or would you rather catch a bullet or would you rather have one fired at you through a gun? See, the, the bullet's mass is not going to change, but its speed changes, and so therefore the momentum is going to change a lot. So to review, an object, a moving object, can have a large momentum based on either its mass, okay, if it has a huge mass and a, and a low speed, or a high speed and a low mass, or in the case of a very high momentum, it would have a very big speed and a very big mass. So like to get hit by a meteor would be awful. We've talked about in the past that it's easier to throw a baseball than it is to throw a bowling ball. Well, likewise, it's har harder to catch a bowling ball than it is to catch a baseball because the bowling ball could be thrown at the same speed of a baseball, but since it's harder to get it going, it must have been more force required, and that force acting upon that speed gave it a speed, and now it has momentum. So a bowling ball at the same speed of a baseball is going to have way more momentum because it's more massive. Therefore, it's harder to stop that object from moving. So to catch one would be Pretty, pretty awesome if you could catch a bowling ball. So the main point here is that inertia, which was that resistance to change in motion, is momentum. Momentum is that resistance and change to something that's moving. So it's very, very tied to Newton's first law. But we can see that since it's mass and velocity, we can understand it a lot better. We could actually find out how fast something needs to, ha to happen uh, in order to crash. You could test whether a car would crash at this speed or this speed or this speed. Um, uh, test dummies are all designed so that you can know how fast that they were moving when they, when they crashed just for this reason. Okay, so let's review the formula. Momentum, which is a Greek letter rho, is equal to the product of mass times velocity. And remember, velocity is in a certain direction. So if you, if you don't care what direction it is, it would just be uh, mass times speed. How fast you're going times how massive you are is your momentum. So we've looked at this idea that a fast car can have more momentum than a slow truck if it's going much, much faster. So if you have rho equals mass times velocity and you have a huge velocity and a little mass, you can have a big, a big momentum. So even though a truck is, is much, much more massive than the car, if it's going a lot faster, the car would have more momentum. Now, what I didn't mention before is that if you have no velocity, so if you're going zero, then your mass times zero is zero and your momentum is zero. So that's why that this is only a th this idea of momentum doesn't work with objects at rest tend to stay at rest unless you think of its momentum being zero. But if it has momentum at all, if it has a number that's momentum, then you have to have a moving object. 
So a truck at rest has no momentum. A truck moving would have the momentum of its speed times its kilogram weight. So what about a truck and a roller skate? Can you have the same momentum? Yes. If a truck is 10,000 times more massive than a roller skate, in order for the roller skate to have the same momentum as the truck, you're going to have to, it has to be traveling 10,000 times faster than the truck would for it to have the same momentum. But you can see that the momentum, since it's based on two different things, as those two different things change, momentum's gonna change. So do you remember? What factors affect an object's momentum? An object's momentum is going to be based upon the product of the object's mass times the object's velocity. For that reason, momentum is also a vector. A mo momentum is a momentum in a certain direction because the velocity is the momentum in, that, in a direction. So it's based on velocity, therefore it has a direction as well.